It's my pleasure to welcome you to two days of glimpses of past in honor of Karen Ulenbeck's habeas first name. So I have a few disadvantages in welcoming you. The first one is that I'm not a mathematician. And the second one is that I'm, I'm new here, so I haven't had the good fortune that many of you had of working with Karen for many years. But I have some advantages. One is that I'm a historian, so I don't actually like meeting people. I prefer reading things. <laughs> and the other one is that I'm the director, so I have access to the personnel file. <laughs> so uh, rather than um, having to use my own words to summarize some of Professor Ulenbeck's achievements, I can, for example, talk about the 1978 letter in which the faculty of the Institute uh, spoke glowingly about the achievements of this person they wanted to bring here as a member. And I, I, I'm not going to say who wrote the letter um, because <laughs> confidentiality, but it says things like, Kay Ullenbeck has done very interesting work on nonlinear elliptic systems, Morse theory on Lorentz manifold and on harmonic math. Her Acta Mathematica paper on elliptic system is a major piece of work. She was able to show and I can just go on, <laughs> but I won't. That was 1978. I've also read the reports that Karen wrote after each of her visits to the Institute, each of them a model of mathematical achievement, sociological insight, and dry humor. <laughs> so one example from her report on the special year in geometric partial differential equations, 1997-98, which had actually a lot of really interesting sociological observations, but it's not all quotable, so I just... <laughs> well, I always hoped for some mixing, the physicists ate at one table and the math people at another. Yes, Dan Freed crossed over routinely. Him and Dyson did once. <laughs> I have no clear idea how to influence this kind of intermingling either between the math community and outside influences or within the community itself. So you can already see the sociological uh, Ullenbeck at work. <laughs> and of course, I've read a great deal about Karen, by and about Karen. That is, after all, what historians do, read rather than talk to. We, I, <laughs> we have a lunch date schedule. And that's um, so rather than give you my own summary of her mathematical achievements, I'll simply borrow from her own words from a 1996 interview. I started out my mathematics career by working on Palais's modern formulation of a very useful classical theory, the calculus of variations. I decided, and this is all explicitly in a very accessible language because it's, it's an interview for lay people. I decided Einstein's general relativity was too hard but Matt, don't believe that. <laughs> but managed to learn a lot about geometry of space time. I did some very technical work in partial differential equations, made an unsuccessful pass at shock waves, worked in scale and variant variational problems, made a poor stab at three manifold topology, learned gauge field theory, and then some about applications to four manifolds, and have recently been working in equations with algebraic infinite symmetries. I find that I'm bored with anything I understand. <laughs> um, Karen Gordon has earned her many honors, including in reverse chronological order, the Leroy P. Steele Prize for Lifetime Achievement from the AMA, the Abel Prize, the National Medal of Science, the MacArthur Prize, the Commonwealth Award for Science and Technology, et cetera, et cetera. And we're here in part because of Karen's extraordinary mathematics. But we're also here because of her extraordinary person. Karen has collaborated with many in this room and outside it, both in the discovery of new mathematics and in the creation of institutions designed to help others discover their own capacity for mathematics. I'm thinking of institutions such as Park City Math Institute, Women in Mathematics, etc. Everywhere I go, I find people touched by her collaborations. So for example, yesterday I was talking on Zoom with Rafe Mazeo of Stanford, and now director of PCMI, so a successor of sorts, collaborator on the Yamabe problem. Connoisseurs will know that I'm thinking here of the article by Mazeo Pollock and Lundbeck, modulized spaces of singular Yamabe metrics in a general American mathematical society. 
So how to explain this extraordinary capacity for personal connection and collaboration? Once again, I'm gonna give you Karen's explanation. I worked by myself a lot. In fact, that was one of the attractions of mathematics. I am the eldest of four children, and I consider dealing with my siblings the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> that had a great impact on my choosing a career. I wanted a career where I didn't have to work with other people. <laughs> Dear Karen, I'm sorry to report that if you really wanted a career where you didn't have to work with other people, the presence of all of us here is evidence that you have gloriously failed. <laughs> all of us have learned from working with you and continue to do so. Speaking for myself, you're teaching me every day, even though this is our first meeting, to imagine new ways in which the Institute might continue to follow in the path that you, Bob Moses, and others have set toward overcoming the prejudices that barred the way to math for whole portions of humanity. So I know that everyone in this room joins me in celebrating your failure to work alone, in celebrating your mathematics, and in celebrating your birthday. And I want to invite Stephen Bradlow up for the conference. Welcome. Thanks. Well, that's a hard act to follow. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm. So I'm Steve Bradlow, I'm one of Karen's uh, former students, and um, really just on behalf of the organizers, I just wanted to um, welcome you here. Uh, the organizers, uh, myself, uh, George Daskalopoulos, Antonella Grassi, and Dan Freed, Dan will be here later. Um, so I just wanted to give you a brief welcome, a um, very warm welcome, it's a fantastic reason for us being here. I think virtually everybody in the room uh, has been enriched by an association with Karen in some capacity, either as, as a collaborator or a student or a mentee or a friend or, or maybe several of those. Um, and I mean, that alone makes this occasion special. Um, but I also just wanted to point out that the, the program is a little bit different to um, the usual sort of meetings that we go to. It's not doesn't follow the straight just research talks model. Um, the, the theme then and now is um, one of Karen's typically wise ideas and uh, gives us a sort of a rare opportunity to view from a different perspective where we are now. And, and that applies not only to the mathematics, but to the mathematics profession. And um, that will be reflected in the panels that are also a slightly unusual part of this program that I hope everybody will enjoy and benefit from. Um, the theme is also reflected in the speakers and the participants, um, which includes early collaborators and also uh, mathematical children and mathematical grandchildren as well. Um, so uh, I, I think we have a, a wonderful weekend to look forward to. Um, and a great welcome to everybody who's here. Um, and so without further ado, I'll, I'll uh, introduce our first speaker, who um, is one of the early collaborators, Rick, Rick Shane, from now from University of Irvine. Um, Rick, uh, let's see what your title is. Uh, minimal surface for <laughs> higher code nature. 